been coming back. I mean, granted, it's TNA in the impact zone, so it's, it's a smaller venue and it's it's more um, personal. But the people just erupted when the Pope made his return to the ring. And, he, you know, you saw a couple tears escape his eyes, you know, heartfelt, you know, thank you to the crowd as they chanted Pope is pimping and all that stuff. Great, great segment. You know, big fan of the Pope here. Expect to see a offering to the congregation, if you will, in the, probably sometime during this week on com, where you can check out my articles as well as the other awesome staff members, Jen Preston, Chris Brown, AKD, Kevin Gilman, um, Denim Millward, who am I missing? Darius Brown has a new article of Demetrius. Um, but yeah. Oh, DJ Rallo and Christopher Zach. Awesome writers. We're still looking for more writers. If you're a wrestling fanatic and you're a decent to good writer, you know, shoot us a shoot us a message, an email, hit the ropes radio at gmail dot com. Find us on Facebook, <clears throat> Facebook, MySpace, Twitter. We're there. You just do hit the ropes. On Google, and you you more than likely find us. It's, uh, we're growing, basically. We got Darius Brown in the his house. What's up, B? I don't know. I mean, as I'm hearing you go on about all the great writers that we haven't hit the ropes, and 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 beforehand talking about the Pope, I can only wonder, Shane. If reminiscing of this past Thursday has you a little choked up, you, you sound as if that you were struck by still days later the Pope's uh, speech to the congregation. Ah, I wasn't choked up. Uh, you know, I, I was talking for a good ten minutes by myself, so you know, I, I had to you know breathe a little. So it, it wasn't so much me choking up. Okay, uh, it's it's okay, Shane. You can you can admit it. You know, <laughs> your touch. You have a special place in your heart. He's a Hall of Famer. Oh right? Lord, are, it's okay. I almost cried too. I was right there. Oh God. Well, I I wouldn't blame you. You you know, family man. You're all sensitive and stuff. Uh, what, no, no, no barbecue today. I thought you'd be in the back with the ribs and all that stuff. Well, that's how we do it in, in South Kakalaki, but but today's uh, my mom's Drake's birthday, so I'm on a uh, she, we've traded in the barbecue for a golden corral. So I'm on the way. Uh, I'll probably end up getting cut off somewhere in the segment, and you'll be uh, left going mono mono with your boy John. But I'm on the way for a birthday dinner, not just the country, but my madre as well. So, good weekend. Uh, Golden Corral. I'm not eating at Golden Corral. It's not bad. It's it's, it's, it's a stuff above Ryan's or uh, uh, what's it? Quincy is the other one. It, I don't know what y'all have down there in in Miami. I don't I don't know if y'all have too many buffet like. Well, we have a Golden Corral. I don't. I, I've never heard of a Quincy's or whatever you just said, though. Yeah, it's been out of business for about a decade, so that's probably why. <laughs> but you know, I started the show off talking about you know something that I know so much about. I was talking uh-huh. about UFC 116. Yeah. You know, um, but seeing as how you're more of the MMA guy, yeah, I I, I mentioned the fact that. I, I saw some people question how come the referee 
didn't stop the fight in the first round where Brock seemed to be, you know, cuddled up like a little baby, you know, because yeah. Carwin was pounding the hell out of him. And the ref didn't the ref didn't stop the match and you know, people are saying that in other matches the ref would have stopped the match right there. Now are you in agreement with that? Um yes and no. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah and no, but if if you remember and if listeners remember our conversation with, with UFC vet referee Steve Mazzagotti. I asked him a similar thing, you know, pertaining to other fighters, and what he told us was it depends on the particular fighter in the cage. It's not it's not a universal thing. Um, typically, they'll, you know, stop the fight if you're not properly defending yourself, which I would have said that Brock Lesnar did not properly defend himself. But obviously, through he was able to continue after that pounding. Um, so you know, yeah, if, if if he would have stopped the fight, I think you wouldn't have had anybody disagree. Probably less than than him continuing. But look what happened. He ended up uh, he ended up tapping the guy out, which nobody saw him coming. We knew that we were going to see Brock Lesnar take him down to the ground and try to do his own ground and pound. But nobody saw the submission skills coming out out of the bag, so that was a good fight. You know, a lot of people were disagreeing. You know, he's already got a second fight lane um, lined up with eight and zero Cain Velasquez, who might be equally troubling. But I wouldn't have mind seeing that rematch because UFC is doing a lot of rematches lately. I wouldn't have mind seeing that rematch first. Oh, uh, but. And the whole show seemed to have been filled with some pretty good fights from what I, I you know, I was watching tweets and, and reading uh-huh. articles, and it seemed that the show was, you know, a pretty good, entertaining show. Oh, it was. It was surprisingly entertaining because after Brock Lesnar and Shane Carlin, you really didn't have any big names. You had Stephen Bonner, who who was famed from, uh, from the Ultimate Fighter series, but... You know, he's lost three straight fights. Usually on your third loss in a row, you're out of there. And he put on a heck of a show. He uh, he was getting the tar beaten out of him. Hey, you know, some people were making fun of the way Brock was running, literally running backwards when Shane Carlin was attacking him. Uh, you know, this guy, Bonner, was doing the same thing, except for he was doing it more frequently. But ended up winning the fight. And then Chris Lieben came in there off of only two weeks um, rest. He fought two weeks ago, won the fight two weeks ago, came in and won this fight via submission. And he's usually known as a uh, as a uh, you know stand up guy. Hurt so crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Oh, huh. well. Hopefully, hopefully the the wrestling pay per views which are coming up start next week, I guess are are as not next week, week after um, are as entertaining as last night was. Now, yeah. do you do you think do you think that it, it got the million buys that people were wondering if it would get the million buys? I don't know. Um, they're going for was it the first time ever two in a row with the million buys? I'm not sure. Um, or was it 114 that got the million buys with Rashad and, and Rampage? And I don't know about 115, but I don't know. He's awfully po- uh, popular. I was I was at Kicking Chicken, with a local chain here, um, and it was pretty packed. We had, it was standing room only. So um, if that's any indication how, how popular it was, there's probably, you know, a whole lot more people who stayed 